In this example, uh, we're shown uh, a couple of functions represented by tables, uh, and we want to determine uh, which of these functions are exponential functions. So the key characteristic of exponential functions uh, that we're going to use to make this determination is uh, in an exponential function, uh, when the input increases uh, by a steady amount, the output will change by a steady percentage amount. So for example, for linear functions, uh, when the input increases by a steady amount, the output will change by a steady amount also. Not a steady percentage amount, but a steady amount. That's true for linear functions. But for exponential functions, when the input increases by a steady amount, the output changes not by a steady amount, but instead by a, a steady percentage amount. So um, we can use uh, this characteristic of exponential functions to determine which of these two uh, tables represents an exponential function. So for example, let's look at this uh, function uh, represented by this table in part A. So notice indeed uh, in this table the inputs are increasing uh, by a steady amount. Um, the inputs here are increasing uh, by one as we go from left to right uh, through the table. And notice then that the outputs are also changing by a steady amount. Uh, each time the input increases by one, notice that the output is increasing by two. So uh, as x goes from zero to one, notice that the output increases by two uh, from seven to nine. When uh, x goes from one to two, when the input goes from one to two, again, the output changes by two from nine to 11, and so on and so forth. So uh, this uh, uh, function uh, uh, in part A uh, is not an example of an exponential function. Uh, it is, in fact, an example of a linear function because, again, when the input increases by a steady amount, the output is changing by a steady amount as well. Not a steady percentage amount, but a steady amount. So uh, this is not uh, an exponential function. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, a linear function. In fact, it's a linear function with slope uh, 2. All right now, on the other hand, uh, let's look at this uh, function uh, in uh, part B. All right, so again, notice that uh, the way the table is set up uh, in part B, uh, the inputs are increasing by a steady amount. The inputs are always increasing by 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, um, but now notice that the outputs are not increasing by a steady amount. Um, uh, as x goes from 0 to 1, notice that y is going from 12 to uh, 18. That's a change of uh, 6. Okay. Um, uh, when x goes from 1 to 2, notice that um, the output value is changing uh, by 9, 18 to 27. So we're not having a steady change in the output. Uh, when the uh, input increases uh, here by 1. Um, notice that uh, when the uh, input goes from 2 to 3, the output uh, changes by 13.5 uh, from 27 to 40.5. Okay, And then finally, when the input goes from 3 to 4, uh, the output changes by 20.25. Uh, uh, so we're definitely not having a steady change in the output. Although we have a steady change in the input, we're not having a steady uh, change in the output. So this is not a linear function, but it could be a exponential function because perhaps uh, these uh, uh, changes in the output represent a steady percentage increase uh, as to, opposed to just a steady increase. Let's um, uh, check that now uh, uh, to see if indeed that's the case. So the way we can do that is by calculating percent changes here. Right? Let's calculate the percent change uh, uh, from uh, 12 to 18. Let's calculate the percent ch change from 18 to 27. Let's calculate the percent change from uh, uh, 27 to 40.5. And let's calculate uh, the percent change from 40.5 to 60.75. If those percent changes are all uh, the same, if those percent changes are all constant, then indeed this is, would be an example of an exponential function because we would have a steady percentage change in the output uh, when the input increases by uh, 1. All right, so um, let's recall our formula for um, calculating percent change. Uh, remember the percent change is going to be the last value minus the first value divided by the first value. So uh, for this first percent change, that is the percent change from 12 to 18, uh, we have 18 uh, minus 12, which of course is 6, that's the change, uh, divided by uh, 12.
and then times 100% to um, convert this into a um, percentage. <clears throat> so we get here um, 6 over 12 times 100%. And of course, that's going to be 50%. So our percent change uh, 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 between these first two outputs is 50%. When the input uh, increased by 1 from 0 to 1, the outputs increased uh, uh, by uh, 50%. All right, now let's calculate this next percent change. So that's going to be 27 minus 18, last minus first, divided by 18, um, and then times 100%. All right, well, 27 minus 18, that's the change, which is 9, and then divided by uh, that first value, which is 18, and then times 100%. And notice again, uh, when you do these, um, when you simplify this, we get a percent change of 50%. Ah, so indeed, see, this potentially is an exponential function because these first two percent changes are uh, constant, all right? So notice the change isn't steady. Um, six, of course, is not the same as nine. So we don't have a steady change in the output, but we may have a steady percent change in the output. All right, let's calculate now this third percent change. That is the percent change from 27 to 40.5. Well, that's going to be 40.5 minus 27, uh, which is 13.5. Of course, that's the change. And then we divide that by uh, the first value there, which is 27, and then convert that to a percentage by multiplying by 100%. And again, notice that's going to turn out to be 50%. So... Um, again, we're having, we're noticing that we're having a steady uh, percent change in the outputs. And let's try that last percent change. If that one also is 50%, then uh, this uh, function represented in uh, by this table in Part B uh, is indeed an exponential function. So again, uh, it's last minus first, 60.75 minus 40.5. That gives us a change of 20.25 and then divided by the first value there, which is 40.5 times 100%. And again, when you simplify uh, this calculation, you'll see that this ends up being uh, 50%. So indeed, uh, the change in our outputs is constant. It's a constant increase of 50%. So as the input increases by 1, the outputs increase always by 50%. And so this is an example uh, the table in part B is an example of an exponential function because it exhibits that key characteristic of exponential functions. The outputs are changing by a steady percentage amount.